dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. The flood destroyed almost everything along Highway 476 in Breathitt and Perry counties, prompting a local church to hold a fall festival for kids in the area. WYMP's Chandler Wilcox details how the church took festivities to kids struggling through tragedy. Bubbles bursting, pumpkin painting, even a cakewalk to lift spirits in Perry County. First Presbyterian Church from Hazard settled at Home Place Community Center to bring kids in the area some fun amidst struggle. This was a central location and we just thought, you know, why ask somebody to come into Hazard to get stuff when we should bring it to them? They brought a fall festival and a place anyone can call home. Uh, we want to make sure that somebody has at least a hot meal today. Cooking food and giving the kids a chance to be, well, kids again. To bring the kids out here and, and let them play and let them have a picnic, it's important to get the kids back in school and back involved. While a sizzling grill was the only thing physically warm on a chilly fall evening, warmth inside the heart of others brought joy not experienced in months. And we just wanted to, you know, be the feet and the hands of Jesus uh, to people who don't have a lot of hope right now. And a phone call was all it took to bring one neighbor to help another. When they called me to join this, to bring stuff over here to help these people, I was thrilled to do it. Kids left home place with a painted pumpkin and something sweet, but above all else, a smile on their face. And Ari Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Donna Campbell, who works with the Lost Creek Volunteer Fire Department, says some people in the area are still living in tents, which is a major concern, especially with colder, colder temperatures arriving. As many churches gathered this morning for worship, one Perry County congregation had a little more pep in their step as they gathered to celebrate the church's 100th birthday. Petrie Memorial Baptist Church, located in the Walkertown community of Perry County, was first constituted as a church in 1924. And this weekend, several of the church's former and current members came together to worship and celebrate this great milestone. You know, God has blessed this church uh, to be able to continue for 100 years. A lot of churches haven't made it that far. So we, we just feel blessed and uh, just thank God for all of his mercies and blessings. Petrie Memorial Baptist Church Pastor Sam Stacy says he feels the church has withstood the test of time because of its ability to adapt to the many changes society has experienced over the last 100 years. The Knott County Fall Trail Ride has come to a close after a successful weekend. This year, proceeds from the event went to flood relief. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson gave an update on his Facebook page saying the event raised around $48,000. The event will go towards the Knott County did long-term disaster recovery group to assist with home repairs. Another chilly night is on tap across the mountains. Let's go out to Letcher County in Whitesburg, looking at some clear skies back in the distance. And same story over at the London Corbin Airport, looking at a clear sky right now. Current temperature is chilly, sitting at 41 degrees right now over at the airport. Temperatures across the mountains in the lower 40s for most of us, 43 in Somerset, 41 for Hazard, 39 in Manchester, and 50 right now in Pikeville. We do have a frost advisory in effect until 10 a.m. on Monday, and that is for the entire region. So be sure that you take care of your plants and your pets and also check on anyone that may be without heat tonight because it is going to be chilly. Up on satellite and radar, we are looking at a clean sweep, all thanks to high pressure, and we stay dry into tonight under a clear sky. Overnight lows falling into the middle to upper 30s, possibly some lower 30s in our cooler spots. We'll talk about your full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Keaton? It's definitely felt like fall. Thanks, Cameron. Early this morning, a fire broke out in the popular vacation town of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. After more than 12 hours of burning, crews are continuing to put out hot spots. Pigeon Forge Fire and Rescue and Gatlinburg Fire Department arrived on the scene, but the fire was too hard to contain. A retired firefighter explains why this fire was so took so long to put out. It's going to take a while because they're going to have to go in and do what they call overhaul. And basically what they'll go in, if there's any ceilings, if they can get in, um, they'll go in and start pulling ceiling and walls, finding any hot spots and just... You could, you, could, you could spend all day here. 
It's right on the main strip there. As of right now, no injuries or deaths have been reported. A historic trial for the highest profile case in the January 6th attack at the Capitol resumes this week. Oath Keeper Stuart Rhodes is charged with seditious conspiracy, but the trial is also a test for the Justice Department. Here's CBS's Scott McFarlane. A crime unlike any in the nation's history <laughs> has led to a criminal trial unlike any in history. Stuart Rhodes, military vet, Yale law grad, and former congressional staffer, is founder of the far-right Oath Keepers group. Along with four co-defendants, he's standing trial for seditious conspiracy, accused of plotting to attack and block the peaceful transfer of power in America, and facing decades in prison if convicted. Former Justice Department attorney Michael Greenberger says no matter the outcome of the six-week-long trial, history will be made. This case is the most important seditious conspiracy case that was ever brought. In the trial's opening days, prosecutors argued the group was plotting just days after the election. Jurors heard a clip of Rhodes from November 9, 2020, urging his group to be ready to fight to create a pathway to keep Trump in power. I'm willing to sacrifice myself for that. Look if I start there. Okay. Now give President Trump what, what he needs, frankly. Prosecutors showed an open letter written by Rhodes to then President Trump, encouraging Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act to mobilize military veterans and militias and order a new election the militia would help administer. They played this interview clip of Rhodes for jurors. We have men already stationed outside D.C. as a nuclear option. Prosecutors argued the conspirators shared messages referencing civil war and predicting blood and violence. They said the group staged guns outside the D.C. limits and held the execution of a military stack formation to breach the Capitol. For the Justice Department, which has gone to trial against approximately 20 January 6 defendants so far and won convictions in every case before a jury, the stakes here are higher. The Justice Department has limited experience going to trial on the charge of seditious conspiracy, but Greenberger says the trial itself could help avert a future attack. Bringing the trial shows all these people out there think, oh, I'll go to Washington, uh, you know, I'll have a good time, it'll be fun, we'll break into the Capitol. No, you're going to end up, win or lose, convicted or not convicted, devoting a large part of your life and your fortune to defending yourself. The trial resumes here in Washington Tuesday morning. It's expected to last six to seven weeks, which means a verdict could come between Election Day and Thanksgiving. Scott McFarland, CBS News, Washington.